giving his last lecture as Jared Weinstein. Okay, good morning, everyone. So I want to pick up uh, where I was talking last time. May I see my notes? Okay. So from last time, um, we were interested in providing a moduli space of untilts of a perfectoid space in characteristic P. So let's start with the case of a field. That is the kind of absolute case. Let's suppose C is a perfectoid field, um, characteristic P, of course, and algebraically closed. And I had made a certain definition, and that was of a certain attic space, which I called script Y sub C. And this was built out of the ring of VIT vectors of C circ. So I can form spa of this, but I want to throw away the points that think that P and pi are zero. So the pi here is a pseudo uniformizer inside of C as usual. Okay, so this is a Noetherian attic space over QP, because I inverted P, and it has an action of a Frobenius operator phi, because C being a perfect field, it has a Frobenius map, and all of these constructions are, are functorial, so phi acts on this. And in fact, phi acts on this in this totally discontinuous way. It really moves points far away from each other, and so that opens up the possibility of forming the quotient, which is exactly what Koran did last time. And in fact, you can do all of these constructions for a general perfectoid ring in characteristic P. I'm just doing this absolute case. Okay. So after doing this, you get this lovely attic space, which happens to be proper, even though I didn't define that. It's something like compact. Okay. Um, it's helpful to make a few more definitions. So I think I did this one last time as well. There's a ring, a really huge ring, BC. It's something like one of Fontaine's periods, period rings, in that it's enormous and it has an action of Frobenius operator. So on the original space YC, I can consider the ring of functions, the global sections of the structure sheaf. And this is a ring which contains W of C0, but much, much more. These two elements are invertible. And in fact, you've completed W of C0 in a way. You've completed it with respect to a family of norms. It's a Frechet completion. We don't have to know that much about that in detail. I just want to repeat one of the constructions that Karan talked about last time, which had to do with a vector bundle. So how would you construct a vector bundle on this curve xc? What you would do is you would construct a vector bundle on yc with a phi equivariance so that it might descend. So let's just talk about the bundle, which is called O of 1. So um, this is going to be a descent of a trivial bundle on YC, so I'll just call that OYC, uh, with a basis vector E, and I have to specify what phi does to the basis vector, like Karan says, it does this, it divides it by P. And so that gives you a vector bundle, it's a, it's a free OYC module of rank one with a phi equivariance, so it descends to a vector bundle on the curve XC. All right. So I now have this vector bundle O of 1. Oh. For instance, what are its global sections? So this would be like taking the phi invariance inside of the global sections in YC, right? So this is um, just going to be BC, E, the part where phi equals 1 here, right? But that's the same as BC phi equals P. Good. And uh, right, because I did this, phi of E is P inverse E. And we've already encountered this vector space before. This is a really large QP vector space. And we found before that this is isomorphic to H tilde of C circ, where H is the formal multiplicative group. And this was important to us in our study of untilts, non zero elements of this vector space give you untilts of the perfectoid field C. Okay. So the theories are kind of coming together here. All right, well, Farg and Fontaine studied this, and their key insight was that this O of 1, if you declare it to be ample, 
you can kind of make a projective embedding of this analytic space XC. And this part is really fascinating. So I'm just going to write use O of one to make a kind of projective embedding. How might you do this? So we're going to use O of one to make a graded ring. <laughs> so I'm going to let um, for every integer d, p d can be um, the global sections of of O d. Well, what's O d? It's the dth tensor product of O of one, right? When you take global sections of this, you get the part where phi acts as p to the power of d. Okay. I'm going to let p be um, this graded ring, right? And um, once I have a graded ring, I'm free to construct a scheme out of it, and that's I'm going to call Roman XC. That's the proj of this P. Okay. This is kind of a natural thing to do whenever you have an analytic space and a line bundle over it. You can declare it to be ample and then attempt to do this construction, but then it's not always clear what the relation will be with, between the analytic space and what you have. But in this case, something really remarkable happens. So this is the theorem of Farg and Fontaine. Um, well, uh, for one thing, um, P0, the part where phi acts as one on BC, that's just QP. So in a sense, this scheme, the global sections of the structure sheaf are just QP. So QP is like the base field of it. Fine. So scalars are just QP. P is a graded factorial ring. That means that elements of any particular PD factor uniquely into elements of P1. Very strange. And um, let me just kind of sum up what this XC is. XC is an integral, an Ethereum uh, scheme of dimension one. And um, OK, so it's, it, it's not affine, but if I remove a single point, it is. Let's suppose I have a closed point in it. So this absolute value sign means the set of closed points of xc. This is an integral in Ethereum scheme of dimension one, which means there's a single generic point, and then every other point is closed. If I remove one of these points, I get the spectrum of a ring. And in fact, the ring that I get is remarkably a PID, incredible. So this construction using these enormous rings actually gives us something quite easy. What kind of curve, curve do we know? I mean, this is like a curve. It's dimension one. What kind of curve do we know where if you remove any point, you get the spectrum of a PID, the projective line? So this whole time, you're kind of thinking P is analogous. Well, yeah. To um, a graded ring that looks like this, say. Well, I'll just write that. Right? That's another graded ring. <laughs> and then X is analogous to P1, right? This has similar properties. Any homogeneous polynomial of degree D factors uniquely into linear forms. And then when you take proj of this, you get P1. P1 has the property that if you throw away any point, what's left over is the spectrum of a PID, a polynomial ring, right? So this XC, even though it had these very alien origins, is something kind of familiar. It, like, it looks like P1, but with this one huge difference, which is that this curve is not a finite type over any particular field. So yes, it contain, you know, there exists a map from it to spec QP. But that map is very far from being finite type. Okay. Um, how do I know this? Well, let's look at the residue fields of it. So this last bullet point says the following. There's a bijection between untilts of C and the set of closed points of X C. This for us is very satisfying. We're looking at untilts of C all along. What is the uh, map? Well, given a point of xc, 
what I can do is form the local ring. Oh, am I still in, in range? Kind of. Well, I can just look at the residue field, like so. And this is some field, obviously, and it, uh, it contains QP. I mean, there's a, and there's a map from this vit ring to it. There must be. Um, well, yeah, this is just going to be an un untilt of field C. Obviously, this isn't obvious, but this is part of the theory. Okay. All right. Questions? <laughs> That's right. Right. When you remove any point, you get a principal ideal domain. Okay. Oh. All right. So, um, so this gives a wonderful parameterization of untilts of an algebraically closed perfectoid field of characteristic P in terms of the closed points of a pretty reasonable scheme. So this is going to help us in our search for a kind of moduli space of untilts. So. Moduli of untilts to characteristic zero. So um, how do we relativize all of this, right? We don't just want to work with a general C. We want to work with a general perfectoid space of characteristic P. So the hope is that we ha there's some object, I don't know, call it M for moduli space, that should live in characteristic P such that for S, a perfectoid space of characteristic P, Uh, the S points of M, by which I mean the morphisms from S into M, right? The functor of points. I'm going to be translating between these two languages a lot. M gives a functor on perfectoid spaces and characteristic P. Okay. I want this to be the same as untilts. So what is an untilt of S going to be? So it's going to be an S sharp. such that S sharp flat is S. <laughs> and not only that, I really want S sharp to live in characteristic zero. So S sharp should be fibered over spa QP. Yeah. OK. So um, the following is kind of an insight of, of Peter's is to actually construct what this object is. It lives in a category which extends the category of perfectoid spaces. It's called the category of diamonds. And what should I call this object M? Well, look at what's going on here. Morphisms from S to M are like morphisms from S sharp to spa QP. So M is sort of like spa QP. So this M is going to be called SPD QP. And D is for diamond. <laughs> like the diamond spectrum. And um, how does this play out? Well, we, can, or we don't know what this object is yet, but we can say what it is in the case of a perfectoid field of characteristic P. So in the case that S is a C, or sorry, spa C, yeah. we already know what M of S is. We have lots of parameterizations for it. So one of them is the following parameterization you can take this um, H tilde of C0, remove a point, and then mod out by a ZP star. And this is kind of a suggestion for, so yeah, this is what we discovered last time. This is huge QP vector space, puncture it, and then quotient by ZP star. This parameterizes untilts of C. And so this kind of hints at what this M should be. It should be something like the quotient of H tilde by ZP star. Um, and H, H tilde is something like a perfectoid space. Well, actually, right now it's not because I didn't invert a uniformizer. But once I actually um, remove zero, it becomes one. So uh, let me clean this up a little bit. This is in characteristic P. So base changing to FP doesn't do anything. Uh, what is H tilde FP? 
No, it's this formal scheme. It's a spa of FP power series T one over P infinity. And uh, right, so that's what it is a formal scheme, but it also has this QP vector space structure. Uh, in particular, it has an action of ZP cross. What is that action? Well, what does it do to a parameter? Uh, well, it follows a law like this. If I have an element A in ZP cross, it takes one plus T to one plus T to the power of A. So A acts by exponentiation whenever A is a piadic unit. Well, um, guess what? We've already encountered this. This is the same as spa of QP cyclotomic tilt circ. Okay. We already figured that QP cyclotomic is a perfectoid field whose tilt is a Laurent series field in one variable, but perfected. And um, when I take the ring of integers, then I just get power series rather than Laurent series. And you can just check that the actions are the same. So we're a little bit closer now. What happens when I remove the origin? Well, that's just like uh, passing to the quotient field here. So you can just say this is the same as QP cyclotomic tilt. Okay. And this is uh, honest to goodness perfectoid space. It's just one point. Okay, so one point space. And so what's going on here? So this right here is the C points of this right here. And so what this suggests is that um, that M should be something like a quotient of spa QP cyclotomic tilt modulo the action of ZP cross. Because if I take the C points of this and interpret that as taking the C points of spa QP cyclotomic tilt of C modulo ZP cross, I get the right thing. And if I rewrite, you know, if I call this SPDQP, it makes a certain amount of sense. ZP cross is the Galois group of QP cyclotomic over QP. And so this quotient is kind of like taking ZP cross invariance here. And that should result in something that's like QP. But you know, I can't literally do this. This field of characteristic P, yes, it has ZP cross as a group of automorphisms, but if I try to take the ZP cross, so what happens? <laughs> If I try to take the ZP cross invariance inside of this field, so this is a Laurent series field in one variable over FP. If I try to take the ZP cross invariance, I don't get anything like QP. All that's left is FP. It's very disappointing. What this is trying to be is like a tilt of QP, but that doesn't make any sense. Actually, it does if you just follow literally what tilt does. You can apply it to QP, but you'll get something uninteresting. You'll just get FP. You've forgotten the interesting part of QP. OK, well, we have to fix this problem. And the way we do it, uh, well, I want to suggest the way we do it. What do we do? So this works very well. For S is spa C, where C is algebraically closed. What if we have a base which is a point which is not algebraically closed? So let's do this. Um, So now I'm going to use the letter K rather than C, indicating this might not be algebraically closed. So let's say it's a perfectoid field. How do we parameterize untilts in terms of this language, in terms of this object, SPDQP? Well, given an untilt, I can't do what I did before. What I did before was to compile a sequence of roots of unity of p to the nth power order inside of k-sharp. But k-sharp may not contain them. Fine, I'll adjoin them. Um, let me put an infinity here. And that's going to mean k-sharp, I adjoin all p-th roots of unity, p-th power roots of unity, and then I complete. 
And this is a perfectoid field. And it carries with it an action of a group G, which is a Galois group. Right, that's Galois, that's fine. Okay, it's some subgroup of ZP, sure. So this is a perfectoid field, and then I can start doing what I did before. I'm gonna take the tilt of it. Well, no wait, not yet. Um, In fact, I'll just do this. Certainly the field QP cyclotomic embeds into K infinity sharp. There we go. Now I'll take the tilt. I have one perfectoid field sitting inside of another. And now k infinity sharp flat, I'm gonna call that k infinity. This is now a perfectoid field uh, of characteristic p again, and it contains k. And it still carries that action of g. So what's happened? I had a perfectoid field k, and I'm have an untilt of it, uh, I then pass to this huge extension of it, possibly huge, and then I tilt the result. So now I have this k infinity over k. What sort of beast is this k infinity sharp? Well, it's a completion of a tower of extensions of a perfectoid field. So this k infinity sharp over k is what's called pro -etal which is the, like the thing Bargov was explaining, except it's quite simple in this case because it's just one point. Spa of this is just one point. But it's a completion of a tower of atoll, finite atoll extensions. Oh, sharp. When I tilt it, I still get something pro atoll. I mean, by the tilting equivalence, tilting preserves the relationship of being pro atoll. It preserves finite atoll, for instance. Great, so what do I end up with? I, get up, I end up with a certain element, I'll call it epsilon. And this lives in um, well, Spock, I, what do I have? I have a map from this ring to this ring. So I have a point of this perfectoid space over k infinity. And uh, well, it's almost it. I have to take care of some things, do some bookkeeping. We um, have this group G, and that's like a Galois group for k infinity over k. And is this element G invariant? What does G do? Well, G operates on these roots of unity in some non-trivial way, possibly, and G is going to change this embedding. How would it change it? Well, it might change it by an element of ZP cross. In fact, it changes it by a cyclotomic character, essentially. So what happens, though, is that you don't, get, you don't quite get a G invariant element. What you get is, if I mod out by ZP star first, the whole thing is going to be G invariant. In other words, if I translate this map by an element of G, I've translated the homomorphism by an element of ZP cross operating here. Okay. Oof. So uh, what does this mean for our study of untilts of K? Well, how might I describe them? I'll do this. I'll say the category might look like this. To give an untilt is to give a pro etal extension maybe it's Galois with group G and then an element of spa QP cyclotomic tilt functor of points on QP, modulo ZP star, oh boy, G, and this map stone tilts of K. Yikes. <laughs> well, okay, well, this is a kind of a mouthful. 
but maybe there's a way to state it more eloquently. Okay. Well, um, Bargov set me up pretty well for it because he already talked about, I guess that's one, that's two, because he already talked about the proetal site. So the way to clean this up is to use the language of sheaves on the proetal site. This is going to be a section of a quotient sheaf on that site. Um, let me give a name to a category, PFT, perfectoid. So this is going to be the category of perfectoid spaces of characteristic P. <coughs> and I give this category a topology. Uh, we have discussed the proetal site, so I can give this category the topology of the proetal site. So. To it, every object, for every object here, there is a notion of proetal morphism. And if, if you have a collection of such morphisms, there's a notion of being a cover. Okay. So given an object, x, a perfectoid space, well, you get a functor of points, hx. Y just goes to the set of Y points of X, X of Y, right? Oh, thank you. Okay. And one important lemma proved by Peter is that this representable pre-sheaf is a sheaf. That's rather important. Oh, yeah, I really should have written, written this, yeah. Yes, in this category, PFD. Wonderful. And, uh, yeah, great. Yes? This one. Yeah, I've been a bit sloppy about what I mean by an untilt. What an untilt really means, thanks. An untilt is really, by definition, a pair K sharp iota. Oh, well, go to my notes. I've explained it a little more carefully than I am now. So this iota is an isomorphism between K sharp tilt and K. I guess, I guess the iota appeared at this stage. Okay. So uh, just some notation, if, if X is a if X is a perfectoid space, in general, possibly of characteristic zero, um, I'm going to make this piece of notation. X upper diamond is going to be this representable sheaf attached to the tilt of X. Okay. And um, another piece of notation in the affine in the case that x is affine. So for a perfectoid ring R, if x is spa R, I'm going to write SPD of R to be x, the same x diamond. Okay. So um, we want pieces of notation like this laying around. If, I, if we have a perfectoid ring R, I now have a way of attaching to it some sheaf on the category of perfectoid spaces. And so now sheaves on the category of perfectoid spaces are now going to take center stage. <coughs> By this theorem, that, that category contains the category of perfectoid spaces. It's an enlargement. Um, let's make a definition. S 
SPDQP. <laughs> okay. So this is the thing that we hope classifies untilts, and in fact it does. So a priori, this is not well defined yet, because R is not a perfectoid algebra. I should write this here. R is perfectoid. Instead, what I'm going to do is construct SPDQP cyclotomic. That makes sense because this is perfectoid. So this is a sheaf on the category of perfectoid spaces. I'm going to take that sheaf and quotient it by ZP cross, which is the Galois group of QP cyclotomic over QP. So it's kind of you're remembering the descent datum from the cyclotomic field down to QP. And so this is as a sheaf on PFD. Yes, for now, that's all it does. So all perfectoid spaces to sheaves on PFD, that's what this X to X diamond does. So that's why I say sheaves on the category of perfectoid spaces is an enlargement of the category of all perfectoid spaces. And this realizes this as a full subcategory of this. All right, so we have this sheaf quotient. I, should, I want to be somewhat explicit about what this does. When you form the quotient of a sheaf by a group action, say, you have to take the, well, you can do the naive thing, sections of this over some test object might be sections of this, the original sheaf, modulo that. You get a pre-sheaf that way, but you have to sheafify. So to sheafify, you have to pass to some cover and really give a section over each element in the cover, that's how you would write down an element. So just to make this perfectly explicit, oh, you want me to do this, right? Yeah, OK. All right, and you're going to watch me screw it up now. <laughs> OK. Yeah, this ZP, well, OK. You have to consider this as well as a sheaf, is that what you're saying? Yes. So you have to interpret this. But fortunately, we have precedent for this and this, right? If you have some group, you can form this underlined thing. and That's going to be a sheaf on. Yeah. If I have a test object S, what is SPDQP of S? Um, well, to give it, I need to pass to some possibly non-trivial pro etal cover. Well, so I'll write this. To give an element of this is to give S tilde to S, a pro etal cover. And then lowercase s will be a, a morphism from S tilde into Spa QP cyclotomic. In other words, an S tilde point of Spa QP cyclotomic tilt. But modulo the action of ZP star. Now, right, <laughs> per Peter's comment, I probably want to actually write ZP star underline of S tilde. But if S tilde happens to be connected, you can ignore what I just did. Is the, the purpose of writing this underline, this little detail, is to sheafify the constant pre-sheaf, which assigns to ZP to every object. So it's true. I may run into trouble with it. No? All right. Yeah, that's right. So if you, if you do the naive thing of how you turn a constant prefix sheaf into sheaf, you'll actually get the wrong thing. So what is this? This is actually, um, no. 
well, Hom's in the category of topological spaces, which means continuous maps <laughs> from S tilde as a topological space into ZP across that. Yeah? Yeah, good. So we have precedent for this in Bargov's talk. And the third thing is like, OK, I passed this pro a tall cover to C the S tilde. But if I'm really giving a section of SPD QP of S, there's got to be some descent datum from S tilde down to S. And, uh, well, to write down what a descent atom is, if you've never seen it before, I don't think will be very enlightening. But I will tell you that often the dis this S tilde to S can be taken to be not just any pro -tail cover, but a, a torsor for some group G, for some profinite group G. There is no subscript here. I didn't write any beta. Four, four, yeah, 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 okay. Sorry, okay. Well, the relevant theorem here is what does SPDQP do to, do to S? Well, it does the thing that you expect it to do. It classifies all of the untilts of S. So it classifies perfectoid spaces S sharp and characteristic zero whose tilt is just S. So in other words, untilts of S. All right, fantastic. So you could spend a little more energy trying to spell this out very explicitly because I wasn't very explicit about what a descent datum means and how you use it. But um, rather than do that, I think I ought to say something about what this object is, what category it lives in. So um, sure, it's a sheaf on the category PFD, but it belongs to a special subclass identified by Peter, which retains some kind of geometric structure. So uh, here it is, <laughs> the definition of diamonds. So a diamond is a quotient of an object of PFD that is a perfectoid space and characteristic P by well, not necessarily a group, but an equivalence relation, a pro etal equivalence relation. So what's going on here? My object shall be called X, and the equivalence relation looks like this. It's just two morphisms from a perfectoid space R into X. Each one of those morphisms has to be pro etal. We've already seen a notion of pro etal for perfectoid spaces. What does it mean to be an equivalence relation? Well, it rather means what it ought to. For any test object S, I get two maps well, from R of S to X of S. And so I get some kind of, well, the image of it is a subset of the product X x of s cross x of s, and I want that subset of x of s cross x of s to be an equivalence relation, so that it makes sense to talk about the set of equivalence classes. OK. What do I mean by the quotient of x by r? Well, um, to each of these objects, there's an associated sheaf on the category PFD. And so I have two morphisms of sheaves from r diamond to x diamond. And then whenever I have a diagram like this, I can go ahead and form the co-equalizer, 
F diamond. And that's going to be a generic object in the category of diamonds. It's going to be a, a, a sheaf on PFD, which is the co-equalizer of a proetal equivalence relation like this. And uh, there is some precedent for this in algebraic geometry. It's the notion of an algebraic space. So I'll put it this way. We've enlarged the category of perfectoid spaces. As, uh, as schemes are to algebraic spaces. An algebraic space is a quotient of a scheme by an etal equivalence relation. And now we've just, <laughs> superficially, it seems like a straightforward generalization. But there's a lot of details to take care of, sure. Uh, what can be done with this new category of diamonds? OK, so there, it's some geometric construct. It, it um, is like a quotient of a perfectoid space. And it contains a very important object, SPDQP. So SPDQP is the quotient of a real perfectoid space, SPDQP cyclotomic, by an equivalence relation which is given by the action of a group. Often in practice, that's how these things come about. But many more things are diamonds. In fact, there exists, so this is another theorem of Peters, there exists a fully faithful functor from really a huge class of attic spaces, analytic <coughs> over ZP. Uh, what do I need to make it so? Oh, that's right. There's some normality condition. Oh, yeah. Into the category of diamonds. What? Oh, you mean diamonds over what? Sorry, structure morphism over spot ZP. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Uh, well, I think it's simpler if I just wrote down, wrote, crossed out the fully faithfulness part. Okay, so, so this a functor. <laughs> yeah, it, it's true. I'm being sloppy with coefficients. If I had written, I could also write attic spaces over QP and then preserve the structure morphism to QP here. Otherwise, there's no chance it's going to be fully faithful. Sorry. Yeah, well, if I'm going to do that, then I might as well cross this out. All right, this is <laughs> first look. <laughs> at, a, at a glance, there at least exists this, this thing. Yeah. So what does it do? So what is X diamond? So notice that this, this category of analytic attic spaces over ZP, it includes the entire category of rigid spaces over QP. Anal to be analytic, you need a pseudo-uniformizer, and it, maybe it's P. And so X could be a rigid space. And so what's X diamond? Well, what does it do on a test object Y? So that's going to be the set of untilts. In a sense, it's like untilts to X. So if Y is an object in PFD, then what does X diamond do to Y? It's the set of untilts Y sharp, which are fibered over X. It has to be. Has to be has to actually be an untilt, right? Okay. All right. So y sharp is fibered over x. Wonderful. So this is uh, mimicking what's going on over here. So SPDQP is the diamond version of the rigid space, which is just one point over QP. When I say fibered over, I mean exactly having a map to whatever. Yeah. This is page five. OK. Well, I don't have such a long time left. So I wanted to give some examples. And I think Quran will give even more examples. But the examples that I have in mind and which are all over the notes 
Um, okay. So I'm interested in diamonds, which happen to also carry the structure of QP vector spaces. And this continues a theme that I've been talking about. So um, here's what I'd like to do. I'd like to consider the following. Consider the following morphisms from the category of perfectoid spaces over C to QP vector spaces. Where C here uh, is going to be in characteristic zero this time. C over QP will be a perfectoid field, algebraically closed perfectoid field. So what are all of the ones that we can think of? <laughs> so, okay. And when you write B of D, do you still mean very explicit B perfectoid spaces here? No, now I mean perfectoid spaces over C, where C is in characteristic zero. But we know now that that means the same as, it, this is like a base change. I mean, it's like um, perfectoid spaces equipped with a morphism to SPDC. Yeah. <laughs> so um, here's a really simple one. It's just QP, but I'd better underline it. So this is going to be a sheaf, the sheafification of, oh yeah, same problem. <laughs> yeah. R goes to QP, okay. Well, yeah, yeah. All right, so that's like the, con it's rather boring. Just, what, I'm making the same error, right? Yeah. Well, I'm making the same error again. <laughs> well, I already wrote down the, defi the proper definition. Um, so R could go to QP, that's dumb. R could also go to R, because R is uh, living, is a C algebra, so in particular it's a QP vector space. So this just sends R to R, considered as a QP vector space. That's A, that's A1. And so this is the diamond version of A1, and so it, it, it really is a diamond. All right, can we do anything more interesting than this? So, um, yeah. There's this, um, there's this guy H tilde C. Consider the diamond version of this. But we already knew this was a perfectoid space, and now I'm just considering it as a sheaf on PFDC. So this sends R to H tilde of R circ. But this H tilde of R circ, we have identified it, well, it turns out that this works in general, with the global sections of the structure sheaf O of, no, of the line bundle O of one on XR tilt. So I, I already talked about this uh, in the case when R was just C, um, and there it's a theorem of Farg and Fontaine, but it does actually work in general. Okay. So we have this rather interesting vector space, H tilde, and this is an example of a banach Colnez space. It's a really huge vector space. It's neither of these two, but it admits um, an exact sequence. Better shift that by one. So this we talked about um, in a previous lecture. This map is something like a logarithm map, and the kernel of a logarithm map is like a Tate module consisting of roots of unity, systems of roots of unity. So we get an exact sequence like this. So the category of diamonds contains rather interesting hybrids between vector space objects of the previous two sorts. Great. Well, I can make a variation on this theme. This H was going to, supposed to be the multiplicative group, but I can choose any P divisible group I like. Um, in particular, I can let lambda be a rational number. Let's say it lies between 0 and 1, and let me write it in um, 
fraction form is D over H, and D or H, D and H are positive with no in reduced terms. And um, then I can form a P divisible group, H lambda. And I can replicate what I did in this bullet point. When I take the universal cover of that P divisible group and evaluate it on R circ, I get global sections of a line bundle on R, on R, on X R tilt, and it's so. This is very funny. I'm going to take O of lambda. <laughs> so, the farg fontaen curve, yes, it admits O of n when n is an integer, but it also admits it when n is replaced by a rational number like this. And there exists an exact sequence like this as well. And then the last thing I'll say is that even for things like O of 2, the functor that assigns to R Um, <laughs> this QP vector space is also a diamond. But it's not representable by a perfectoid space. It's truly something different whenever I have a rational number which doesn't lie in this range. Okay. Thanks. <laughs> it's been a pleasure. Questions? Um, so you, when you define the SPD QP, uh, were you using implicitly a statement of the kind that tilting is a faithful functor? So you weren't defining a stack by, but actually a sheaf? It really is a sheaf. Um, so well, sorry, is tilting the is, is yeah. the operation of tilting a faithful functor? Because the operation of tilting a faithful functor. So from S to S tilt, yes. Yeah, this is part of the tilting equivalence. Unless I mis misunderstand. No, for the tilting equivalence, you have the base perfectoid field. Yeah, so that, that's right. So I, I think I understand the, the, the question. If you, if you um, yeah, as Peter said, when you want to untilt a morphism, the target of that morphism is the base, and then you can use this like relative tilting equivalence to untilt the, the source. Yeah. Why are these things called diamonds? Why are these uh, such a very common question for Peter these days? <laughs> I think when I ask him, he answers like, well, I liked this symbol. So, but, no, 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 no. <laughs> There's, I'll let, I, I'm just going to turn this over to Peter. So. Uh, why diamond? Um, you see, it's an object that whenever you try to look at it, you can't actually see the object itself. But like, um, like any point that you have, you really like, you want to have this object spidey QP, but you only really have spidey QP cyclotomic, and any point of spidey QP occurs more profoundly often in spidey QP cyclotomic. It's like if you have this diamond and you look at it, and there's some impurity, some point in there somewhere, then uh, I guess you see some more profoundly many reflection of, of it along the many sides. <laughs> <laughs> and it's hard. Okay, and they're hard. <laughs> That's really funny. <laughs> but not rare. Yeah. Okay, thanks. They feel like they're related to crystals, but they're not crystals. So, well, I, I like I like the notation. It's like a mineral, you know, Grotendieck liked his mineralogical term, term, terms. So it's continuing a tradition. Yeah, I've sort of lost the plot. Earlier, there was Fog Fontaine, where you had a moduli of untils in characteristic zero. Yes. Right? And then these diamonds, somehow you're taking the story to untils of K in characteristic P. 
Your yes, cave. So I, I remember today your K was over FP, right? I mean, it was characteristic P object. Well, yes. Well, yes, yes. That never really. Ch oh, you mean this in this last side? Why is my no, C no. suddenly even a character the, of zero? Oh. Well, even at the beginning, you had this uh, map which said K infinity over K pro et al with right. group G, and then you wanted to map it with untils of K, and I thought somehow that's how diamonds entered the picture. Yes. But on the other hand, independently, you have the story of tilting and going from characteristic P to characteristic zero, vice versa, et cetera. Well, that story with the Ks, K was characteristic P, and I was attempting to describe its untilts. And we found that there's this object, SPDQP, which kind of does just that. So can you draw a diagram? So you, on the one hand, when you have characteristic zero perfectoid, you can tilt and go to characteristic P. True. And then you have the moduli of tilts in characteristic P. Yes. And then you have the moduli of tilts in characteristic zero. That was no moduli of tilts in characteristic zero. There's well, just that one was, tilt. That was somehow, uh, sorry, moduli of untilts in characteristic zero. Yeah. That in fact, was you can write down a, So how do the four fit in? Is how there, do the four fit in? Yeah. So you have four right, objects well, one, and you have various functors going from one to the other. How do they, is there a larger picture where you can see all of them? Perfectoid spaces over QP have now been identified with perfectoid spaces X over FP together with a morphism to, that are fibered over SPDQP. That's one part of the picture. There's also this funny farg fontaine curve, which I introduced. Um, how does it really fit into this picture? Well, there's something called the diamond formula, which maybe Karan will talk about. So maybe I can just punt it towards Karan's lecture. I think I'll answer this question. Wonderful. OK, so just in view of the time, maybe yeah. we'll take a quick break. Let's thank uh, Jared for a wonderful series of lectures.